What's going on, everybody? Um, first of all, thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting. The channel's growing a little bit. Uh, it's doing pretty good. Um, last video I put out, I had a viewer that commented, wanted me to talk about bait up on Lake Eufaula. We're in Alabama. And um, I imagine the people that watch any of my videos where I talk about being on the Chattahoochee River or Lake Eufaula, he... Uh, or she uh, had kind of commented and uh, asked, you know, about bait. Uh, I've actually had a few people message me and comment about shad and things like that on Lake Eufaula. So I am going to do a bait video, a lengthy one, um, about different types of bait, where I find them, you know, how to how to get them and how to be successful doing that. So um, bait is probably. It, it is one of the most important things that you can do catfishing. Everybody thinks that a catfish just goes along the bottom and just eat everything that it sees, you know, the nastier, stinkier, dead, you know, stuff that's been rotting out in the sun for days. A mature catfish, a big one, wants fresh bait. Nothing wrong with frozen bait. I still take frozen bait with me. But, but, um, but yeah, bait is one of the most important things that you can do. So uh, I am going to do a, a bait video. But uh, one of the things I want to talk about before I do that, those cast nets. Somebody had a forum on Facebook the other day where they asked, you know, what's, what's one thing or a couple of things that you have in your boat or that you've got in your catfish arsenal to be successful? And there were comments all over about big cat fever rods, tangling with catfish rods, reels, you know, dragon weights and, you know, just all this. If I had to say what one of the things is that, that makes me successful when I go out, that separates me from having a good day on the water, a bad day on the water, one's an anchor and two is a cast net. Probably one of the most important tools I've got in my bag when it comes to catfishing and being successful in catching catfish. So I'm going to talk about that. This video is going to be short. I'm not going to do how to throw a cast net. There are just millions of good videos on YouTube about how to throw anything from a four footer up to a 12 footer. So not going to talk about that, but I am going to just tell you a couple of quick things that I do when I purchase a cast net to make it easier to throw, make you more successful throwing it. So the future videos to come, we're going to talk about gizzard shad. The gizzard shad are actually, I haven't seen a lot of gizzard shad on the, um, on the fish finder. Um, I hadn't been on the river. Sally came through. The river's kind of unmanageable right now. So skipjack this year was just nowhere to be found. I went several times during the spring, several times in the summer. Should have caught 100, 150 skipjack to put away because I do carry frozen bait. I rarely use it, but I do carry a little bit of frozen bait. Um, here as of late, though, I haven't been carrying any frozen bait. I've been loading this boat up, driving an hour up the lake you follow with all my stuff with not a lick of bait because bait is there right now. It's If, if you can throw a net and you kind of got an understanding of where to look, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some video on that. So... Uh, you can read your fish finder, your electronics will help you tremendously if you get, you know, good at, look, you know, knowing what you're looking at. So, but anyway, I'll go up there with no bait just because I've, I can throw, I can pancake a 12 foot net and, you know, it, it's, I can get good bait. And so nothing wrong with frozen bait, nothing wrong with using brim and, you know, uh, jack. And I mean, a lot of people use just, uh, all kinds of bait, uh, manufactured baits, dip baits, chicken liver. I've caught a ton of catfish on spam. People use trout lines. They use soap on trout lines. So, I mean, it's just, you know, to me, though, I, I, I fish with what's native to the water, what the catfish are feeding on, skipjack, um, gizzard shad, and threadfin shad. If I get some gizzard shad, I got an idea of how to catch a few of those. Um, you know, I'll talk about them, but threadfin right now in the summer months, threadfin, we're transitioning in the fall, threadfin's where it's at. I mean, I, I've just tons of success on threadfin right now. But but anyway, 
I've got some cast nets laid out in the yard out there. I'm gonna go over them real quick and give you a couple of things to do when you purchase one that'll make it easy to throw. All right, so um, like I said, I got some videos coming up though where I'm gonna go to Lake Eufaula. I'll probably go at night and go to the bank, go to the, uh, the docks, the public areas, your boat ramps, your marinas, things like that that have lights around them. Show you how to get some shad. I promise you they'll be there. Um, I'll get on the boat, run the electronics, kind of show you how I set myself up to catch that bait because I'm telling you right now, if you want to put more fish in your boat, in your cooler, in the grease, on the grill, it starts with having what those fish are feeding on and it be fresh. And I'm, I'm not talking down about frozen bait because I still carry frozen bait sometimes. When I go to the river, chances are, with just how terrible the lock and the, the uh, dam has been with, with bait this year, I'll probably be carrying some frozen skipjack. So let me run out in the yard right here. Let's just get up and go do it. <clears throat> and we'll uh, go over these nets real quick. So out here, I got laid out in the yard the nets that I predominantly use. I've got a Phytec four footer right here. That's got quarter inch mesh. It's, I think 0.5 or 0.75 on the weight uh, per diameter. This is the net that I'm gonna use at the dam. Reason being, I can retrieve it very fast. If I throw it and, you know, kind of make an errant throw and there's some rocks, I can just rip it back in because it's, it's light, manageable, and it's cheap. I mean, this nets, guys, nets can go, honest to God, you can get a humpback. You can get a black pearl, I think what they're called. You can get I don't forgot that there's just there's net manufacturers that honestly you can drop 300 250 300 350 dollars on a 12 or 14 foot net are they worth it probably so but when you throw a net around a dam in some current if you go up to fort Gaines, throw something off the wall yeah you can you can kiss that net goodbye sometimes so me i'm not going to do that but anyway here's a Fitech eight footer quarter inch mesh I think this is 0.75 or a pound uh, per foot of the radius so um, obviously the more weight you've got on your lead line the faster it'll sink now if you're going for bait that's in 25 20 foot of water you're going to need a pound to a pound and a half of lead and to be honest with you unless your um, hand line is 30 plus feet that net's going to close up before it gets down to the bottom uh, you can attach tape you can actually put duct tape on both sides on the bottom of these nets and they'll actually that tape will flare out and keep that net spread open and it actually but it slows the net down tremendously oh my gosh i mean it I mean, it just barely floats down to the bottom. So you got to be precise where you throw, and you also got to not spook that bait if you're going to use a tape net. But now they do, they do lay out there pretty. Like you can see water footage of them, and they just stay just huge. So, but anyway, that's a Phytec eight footer, quarter inch mesh. Here beside it is a Betts ten foot, three eighths inch mesh. And it's a pound uh, per foot radius. So I use this one for gizzard shad. Um, gizzard shad are where I fish are huge. The Chattahoochee River in Lake Eufaula has some gizzard shad that are pushing the size of a big crappie. So they're a little more rough on the uh, quarter inch mesh. On your mesh, on your buckets, you'll usually have what they are diameter, then you'll have a stretch diameter. So when the, when the bait pushes through, it'll show what it'll stretch to. That's important to know too. Uh, the next net, the one that I throw the most, that I have the most success with, that kind of gets me all the bait that I need for the day is this 12 footer right here. This is a 12 foot six panel net. It's literally uh, made in panels. There's six of them. It has a chain 
bottom that goes all solid all the way around. I actually love the chain bottom nets. They they throw easy, they open bed, they, they open very easy. They spread easy. Uh, only drawback, they're not that heavy. Um, and that's a good and a bad thing. If you're gonna throw this thing all day, it's gonna be better on you because it's not as heavy, but if you want it to sink really fast, it's just not gonna happen. The larger mesh diameter you have though, the faster that net will sink too because water will push up through it and it'll sink. So, but uh, these are the nets. These are, you know, this is the nets that I've bought. I've lost a few nets. So these are the ones that I have right now. So when I buy a net, as long as it's eight foot and greater, um, there's really not, there's really no need to do these things on a, you know, a four or a three or six. I think you can pretty much just pancake those with just good technique and practice. But anything eight plus, as soon as I take it out of the package, I stretch it out. I go boil some water. I put it in my Yeti cooler or a cooler or bathtub if you want to do it real quick. Pour that water in that cooler. And then I go to the store and I get a big jug of fabric softener, just cheap fabric softener pour it in there with the boiling water and then soak that net what that's going to do is when your net comes out of the box it's real coarse uh it's accordioned up it's been rolled and folded up and it kind of retains that shape it wants to bunch up so when you go to throw it it's it's not wanting to be loose and spread out when you put that in that fabric softener and you take that net out i let mine soak for days when you take that net out and you go to load it for the first time to throw it you'll feel what that fabric softener did you'll feel how much easier that net is to throw once you do that so that's tip number one and your yeti or, or whatever cooler my yeti still smells like that fabric softener i've had fish in it deer in it whatever but you open that lid you get you know the little bear holding the blanket smell i mean it's just it's just nice second thing i do is find let me go over here go to the bottom of the net where your lead is or in this case a chain your braille lines that are tied to it they're tied in just a, a knot that tag right there is long it's usually about that long i cut that around the entire net go around the entire bottom of that net walk those braille lines out to the end of it find that knot that tag will be about that long cut it what that does is when you throw that net those you know that's usually 80 or 100 pound test that's thick diameter line so what those tag ends do is they get caught up in the net and they impede the net from opening so that's just one little thing that'll help you there those two things soaking it's probably the most important you know so but i just wanted to touch base on nets really quick um, and, you, and you know guys there's half inch diameter nets there's five eighths i think i've even seen an inch i don't i personally don't need anything like that uh the gizzard chat around here you could use an inch net but unless i'm going to the bay and i'm netting mullet or something i don't need that three eighths quarter half it's about where you need to live five eighths you get away with it with you know big you know gizzard chad and stuff like that but um i just wanted to touch base on nets real quick and kind of lay the foundation for the videos to come the bait videos that'll be coming up um practice with nets guys i've spent hours out in the yard looking like a just a, a weirdo out there just throwing a net but now you know i find my bait I set up on it, I throw a good pancake, and then boom, I'm fishing. So, you know, hopefully I can give you some tips to get to that point. So, but bait is, I mean, it's just, it's important. So, anyway, guys, more videos to come on bait, and um, I hope this is all informative. You guys like, comment, tell me what you want, tell me what I missed, you want to know something, just let me know. All right, guys, see you.